Okay, Aaron Parker, Parker Safes and Vault, Shelbyville, Tennessee. Um, we're gonna look today at a Rhino vault door. This is the Ironworks, the AIW. Um, I think they just call it the Ironworks vault door. But uh, this is an 8040. So the rough opening on this, um, you're gonna need about 80 and a quarter, I think it is, or 80 and three eighths by 40 and five eighths. But don't take my word for that. Uh, when you're doing a vault door uh, installation, it's it's best to pick your door early and then get your rough opening established for that particular model. They're not all the same like a, you know, in, in building a standard 3.0 door would pretty much work uh, on any exterior door frame, right? So uh, your rough openings are almost the same in, in, um, in the construction world, but in the vault door world, they all change. And so you want to get that figured out early. Uh, and then Rhino Metals has a extensive website where they have all the, for each model, they'll give you a spec sheet um, and, and a, that'll give you a rough opening minimums, maximums, and all that kind of stuff. But this door has a quarter inch plate. Um, it does have 10 gauge reinforcements around the edges here. These rivets are kind of cool. And they're also real rivets. Um, I was kind of surprised. I went out to visit uh, Rhino Metals in Idaho years ago and that they were actually putting those rivets in and uh, i thought they were just decorative but they're real rivets so that was kind of cool um this is an outswing door you can get an in swing door uh in swing doors are considerably more expensive so if you can make an outswing door work um great you know in the past i've kind of thought well you know an in swing door might be really important for you know folks in if you're going to use it as like a storm shelter something like that um and that, and that could be the case, right? So you don't want your house to fall around and then you can't push the door open. But a lot of times, if you look at the nature of the, of like the header, you've got a little bit of a concrete prow, so to speak. So you'd be able to open the door, most probably at least enough to put your hand out there. And then if not, what I would do is just keep a pry bar or a little bottle jack or something. You should be able to move that door. You know, even if there's a bunch of wood and stuff piled against it, I would think you could you know, open it up far enough to get uh, your hand out there with a cell phone. But one thing it does do in a vault room, especially if we have a small vault room, like if we were on the inside of this right now, you walk in the door, you know, walk in, and then you've got this big door to contend with, and it takes up a lot of space right here in your vault room, right? So you'd need a pretty good sized vault room for an outswing door anyway. So I, I kind of go, um, you know back and forth on that and but i don't see a, a problem with using a outswing door in a storm situation or, or a um, storm shelter type situation if you have some of the if you've kind of thought it through so anyway for what that's worth uh this does have a let's see let's just start so um so this lock right here this is the smg uh pivot bolt and i don't know if, if you're not familiar with these these are kind of cool but you press in your, your um, code and then you're gonna turn the outer ring here to, to raise the locking bolt up out of the way of the bolt work, right? So what that, what that did, S&G had some problems. I think this is what instigated this, but you know, I might be off on this, but they had some problems probably about 10 years ago with the motor. So you press, uh, press your code, the motor would drive the little locking bolt up and down or up, right? And, and that motor would fail. And if that motor fails, you can't get in your safe or your vault. So what they've done is with this, this just bypasses that motor. So we're pressing the pressing the code, turn that, and that raises it up, uh, raises the locking bolt out of the way of the bolt works. Then to lock it, you have to turn it back down, right? So you got to remember that. But um, so uh, ball bearing uh, hinges and um, some nice features here. This has a I think it's a fourteen hundred degree. Uh, boy, uh, 100, uh, yeah, 120 minute, uh, two hour, 1400 degree uh, fire rating on it. And um, in, inside wheel here too. Inside here, and I'll give you a closer look at this. Uh, actually, I guess we could just do that right now. Stand by. All right, so inside here, you, if you were to, this does have a panic room option. So let's say that, uh, you know, we jump in the room here and then we pull the door shut, we can roll the bolts. And then if we just bend this little tab back, 
Okay, if we just bend this little tab back and throw that pin to the right, it drops down in to a, to a locking hole there. Then to get back out, oops, not doing a very good job of this with one hand, but anyway, there you go. To get back out, you just reset it. So that's how quick you can get, you know, you, you get into your, your uh, panic room, roll the bolts, drop this little pin into place, and then even if the bad guys know your combination on the outside, they still can't get in. Then there's an emergency egress system right here so that if, you know, something locks up or something like that, you can just pull this pin and rotate it up into the up position, and then that'll let you out. But uh, also in here, so that's, that's the panic room and emergency egress. Panic room up here, emergency egress here, and all the instructions are right here. Real nice and easy to figure out. So it's a good little system, pretty foolproof. Um, there's a ball bearing hard plate back in here and also a, a, a panel of glass. You can just start to see it right there. So that's a panel of glass, that's a glass relocker and that's associated with a little um, uh, locking mechanism. I could get camera to do it. Anyway, down in there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's a separate relocking system. So that's that's how that all works inside. Pretty pretty simple. Um, got inch and a quarter bolts here, and on this one there's three on top, and it looks like about eight running up and down the side. And I don't think there's any on the bottom, which you really don't need anyway, but that's fine. So, uh, two intimescent fire seals here. So there's one on the door right here, and then one on the frame. And those will, those should expand if when it's heated uh, to about, you know, four or five, six times maybe. I've, I've heated them up once. They're pretty cool. They, they get real fibrous, but they do do a good job of expanding. But the thing I kind of wanted to show you, show you that's different than the last video, we now have this option for a clamshell effect. So when you, basically this frame right here is attached to the door and that will go, that will go in this frame right here will go in with the door. This is a separate piece back here. So this is like a separate piece here. And this goes on afterwards, and then you bolt it, bolt it together. And so you can also, you can anchor it through these anchor holes. Okay, all the way around. And then, so you can anchor it, and you can use this clamshell effect, which is pretty cool. It does have the uh, standard clutch handle where if you know they're trying to put a lot of pressure on this handle, it'll just, if I can do it, it'll just kind of turn like that and won't, won't let a bunch of pressure um, be applied to that handle. These doors will do, um, I, th I think it's a minimum of, uh, or a maximum I should say, of eight and a half inches thick. So there you have it. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to you as soon as I can. And uh, sorry about the terrible camera work, but there's at least a look at a Rhino Ironworks vault door, the 8040. Thanks for having a look.